What is a global shutter? Well, Sony just put one in a futuristic camera, the Alpha A93. Now, admittedly, I'm no expert on such things, but surely it would be a shutter that works anywhere in the world, right? A global shutter <laughs> that would be perfect for globetrotting photographers. Now, is it any better than, say, the electronic shutter Nikon put into the Z9 and then Z8 cameras? I mean, we know that sort of non-shutter, there's no actual mechanical shutter in those cameras, well, they work pretty much anywhere because those cameras have been tested everywhere from the Arctic to the tropics and everywhere in between. What's more, presumably there's confidence that they're not entirely earthbound because rumor has it the Z9 is soon going to the moon <laughs> where presumably its electronic shutter will perform just fine. Now NASA has a history of choosing great cameras like the uh, Hasselblad for its lunar explorations starting back in the 60s and a host of other cameras including Nikon been on board. Well I hope you caught on that I'm just fooling around. A global shutter is of course and I'm gonna give the Reader's Digest condensed version for the sake of brevity and assuming most people are already familiar with the idea. A global shutter reads all the pixels at once. That's basically it. Compared to mechanical shutters, which uh, even with the advent of Nikon's super fast electronic shutter, uh, launched, <laughs> so to speak, in the Z9 and reprised in the Z8. Well, they seem kind of dated, eh? The A93 is a bit of an innovation in the full frame mirrorless space. And I'm guessing that it would do just fine beyond Earth's gravity. Anyway, the main advantages are that it eliminates altogether the problem of rolling shutter, and which means the distortion of moving objects, though really I have to say that Nikon's blazing fast electronic shutter really solved that issue for all intents and purposes. Not that I shoot uh, swinging baseball bats or speeding race cars. Really, where the A93's global shutter comes into its own I think is in flash photography. It goes further than the leaf shutter, allowing super fast sync speeds up to 1 80,000th of a second. That's impressive, a real boon to sports photographers in particular, I think, and specialized portrait photographers. For my use, I'd say that the high speed sync I've been using for many years gives me everything I need. Now, banding, caused primarily by the pulsing of LED lights and the fact that even the fastest progressive electronic shutters sort of scan the image. And that's another issue that is completely eliminated with a global shutter. So really that's all that I have to say on the Sony A93. I'm not likely to have a chance to test it. And at the price, $8,300 in Canada for the body, I'm not considering the option. It is, I think, fair to say something of a niche camera, albeit one that sets the bar for future developments. I think it'll be interesting to see what other manufacturers, including Nikon, do in response. Do you think that perhaps the Z9 II will come with a global shutter? And, and would your work benefit from a global shutter? Let me know in the comments below. Now to the first firmware update for the Nikon ZF. That's a pretty quick update. The ZF is what, um, I think I've had mine for a month. This is a minor update that adds slow motion video recording and fixed an issue which the viewfinder live view display may not show correctly under some conditions. Um, that's not something that I've come across so far, uh, but I know, for example, my friend Matt Irwin had a brief run in with what this update is designed to fix. At the same time, well, a day apart, the ZF's baby sister, ZFC, APS-C, retro style camera got firmware 1.50 that added support for ENEL25A rechargeable lithium batteries. Now, if you're new to firmware updates, the procedure is pretty straightforward. You begin by formatting a card in the camera, then insert the card into your computer or card reader attached to the computer. Check your existing firmware in the setup menu. Download the appropriate firmware from Nikon's website. Now, drag the .bin file from your computer folder onto the card, and this is important, at the root level of the card. Put the card back in the camera, navigate back to the firmware version, and update OK. 
As an icon cautions, do not turn the camera off during the update procedure. These new updates take some time, often four, five, or six minutes, because they're pretty big files. But the camera will tell you once the update is complete when you can switch off the camera. Check the new firmware version, reformat the card, and you're ready to roll. If I'm late to these developments, it's because I've been busy taking care of business, uh, including, as promised in a previous video, some new gear to look at here, including lenses. The first of those I hope to bring to you in a day or two. If this is your first time here, please do consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell to be alerted to new content. Well, those lens reviews for a start. In the meantime, take care, cheers, and we'll see you later.